you know, we, we talk about the things that we achieve, you know, 18 months sober, a certificate, uh, an expungement. Uh, but when you graduate from here after 18 months and we, hand, we have a little party and have a bomb-ass cake and we give, give you a plaque, what does the plaque say? You are the accomplishment. And, uh, and that's an important thing because that's in the end the hope that will happen that we'll all discover, all of us, not just trainees, but all of us, discover the truth of who we are, that we're exactly what God had in mind, that we're exactly enough. We don't have to become something that we're not. And that's uh, kind of the goal in healing is to know that truth. I remember years ago, a, a homie I knew named Horacio, who I'd known since he was a mococito in the projects, um, he uh, called me uh, and he had just done a five year stretch in prison. And uh, you know, he's talking, oh, I gotta see you and when can we get together? And, and then he says, let me just cut to the cheese. Uh, <laughs> which was not an expression I had ever heard before. And, and he said, look, you know, I went to find my lady, she left me, and she burned all my clothes. I think she might have been mad about something. <laughs> I said, you know, what was your first clue on that one? And I'm hoping he'll cut to the cheese soon. And then he says, so I don't have any clothes, so can you kick me down and buy me some clothes? I said, sure. Um, you know, but I can't see it till like 6 o'clock tonight, he told me where he was. So I go and pick him up and there he is standing on his corner. He's a big huge vato, but after five years he's even more swollen. And, and he's a menacing looking character, to be sure. You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley or even a well lit one. <laughs> but when, he pull, when I pull up, he does this thing like this. He's so excited <laughs> to see me. And which just cracked me up and he hops into the car, throws his arms around me and he said, damn, gee, when I saw you right now, I got all happy. I said, well, me too. So I take him to J.C. Penney's and I say, you got about $200 to spend, so go and buy what you need. And the volada, he's there with his arms filled with uh, stuff and we're in line, a bunch of people ahead of us, a bunch of people behind us. So along with him looking a little bit menacing, he has a loud ass voice. <laughs> And so he's standing there in line, he says, hey, do you see that vato over there? And he points to a man uh, with uh, a wife and a kid. And everybody in line, of course, looks because, <laughs> and then they look at him and they look back because he's kind of menacing looking. And oh, I thought I knew that guy. So I walked up to him and I say, hey, don't I know you? And the guy looks like this, all and like he's having a paro cardiaco, and he, he clutches his chest, he says, I don't know you. And his ruka with the morrito, she grabs the kid and she says, we don't know you, like that, you know. <laughs> and then I look more closer and I say, oh my bad, I thought you were somebody else. And when, as soon as I said that, say, pone all relaxed. <laughs> they get all calm and they go, phew, you know, damn, gee, do I look that scary? I said, yeah, pretty much, you do, yeah. <laughs> and everyone in line laughed and suddenly kinship. So we go eat and I go take him home and he stays in the car a little bit, reluctant to leave and he says, you know what, I'm scared to be out. I said, Miko, you'll be fine. Here's the deal. I don't know anybody who has a heart like you do. In fact, you have what the whole world wants. If you stay close to that heart, you'll be fine. And he said good night and left. Well, at three o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call and it's from Horacio. And he says what homies always say when they call at three o'clock in the morning. Did I wake you? <laughs> I, no, no, kind, kind of hoping you'd be calling. And he was sober and he, uh, he said, I have to ask you a question, and it had this sense of urgency to it. And I said, you go ahead and ask. And he gets filled with emotion, he can barely speak, and he says, you know how all my life I've seen you like my father. And now I have to ask you this question, and he can barely speak it. Have I been your son? I said, oh, hell yeah. And he begins to cry and he says, Whew, I thought so. And now I will be your son and you will be my father and nothing will separate us, right? 
I said, that's right. And he said, good night, and he hung up. Here's the insight. At three o'clock that morning, he did not discover that he had a father. He discovered that he was a son worth having. Big difference. He discovered that he was the accomplishment. He discovered that he was exactly what God had in mind when God made him. That he didn't need to ever become anything he wasn't. He just had to discover the truth of who he was. Exactly right. I'm very proud of what you achieve, but you need to thank God for the fact that you are the accomplishment. Amen. Amen. Do you have a prayer? Yeah. Lead us, lead us in prayer. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry, kiddo. <clears throat> it's okay. Everybody, please bow their heads. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that today your will be done, and we thank you for each and every one of us being the accomplishment just for today. We ask that you help those struggling with whatever it is the struggle may be. The struggles are real, that as long as we are aware of them, then they're not a problem. Bless everybody here today in Homeboys and outside of Homeboys. and. Um, Thank you, God, for allowing us to be the accomplishment today. Amen. 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 Not just today, but Every day. tomorrow. Mañana también. Yeah. <laughs>